HQ presented by Zevo. We get 11 Week 0 games this Saturday. Here are some of them. I, I think the one most people are interested in is a Big Ten matchup between Nebraska and Northwestern in Dublin, Ireland. Illinois hosts Wyoming. Utah State, boy, that's a big number, 27 at home against UConn. Charlotte FAU is on CBS Sports Network. So is Vanderbilt at Hawaii late night. Part of a quadruple header on CBS Sports Network. Let's pick them. We've got games to pick against the spread. Brady Quinn is here. Danny Cannell is there. I'm Chris Hassel. Uh, a few games don't have spreads because they involve FCS teams like Danny's uh, Florida State Seminoles playing Duquesne. Uh, that game you cannot bet on at this point. Maybe later on in the week the lines will start coming out. Let's start with that game overseas. Oh, the old homeland oh, okay. for Brady Quinn <laughs> over there in Ireland. And uh, it's, it's, ne it's Nebraska minus 13 against Northwestern. Both Gosh. teams were 3-9 and nine last year. You know, I don't know how Danny feels about this, but like week one big lines, you kind of go, oh, I don't know how I feel about that, especially betting on favorites in this regard. And, and both teams neither played well last year. And, and changes, you can clearly see both sides. For Nebraska, a ton of transfers onto the roster. Mark Whipple comes in as the offensive coordinator who obviously had a huge season. He's the one who's making everybody puke, right? Well, 15 the, the, to 20 yeah. pukes of practice. Yeah. A lot of puking there. I'm not sure if that's a good thing or a bad thing, by the way. I mean, I, I'm kind of questioning the nutrition and the diet there in Lincoln. But at this point, there's a lot of changes going on in Nebraska. It makes, it makes it hard for me to say, even with Casey Thompson, I think he's talented. It'll be good with Mark Whipple. It's hard for me to bet on Nebraska with that big of a spread early on. With Northwestern, look, down season last year, you get Cam Porter back. Evan Hall at the running back position. Holinsky is your steady hand at quarterback. And defensively, it'll be a bend but don't break. So the thing for me about this game, I love the under. I mean, Pat Fitzgerald's not going to let this thing be a track meet. That's just not how Northwestern plays. They run the football, they play sound defense, they shorten the game. I don't even know if the team that wins it is going to score more than 13 points. And so if the spread's 13, I'm like, give it the 13 points in Northwestern. You're playing at Dublin, Ireland. Who knows how this thing whole plays out? And I don't know how this season is going to play out for Scott Frost with all those changes and trying to put together an entire roster of a lot of transfer portal uh, players. So I'm going to take Northwestern and the 13 points, and, but I love the under in this game. Yeah, I mean, it feels like it could be a pillow fight, a couple three and nine teams from last year, but I think you're going to see completely different look teams. It's hard to go against Pat Fitzgerald. They're playing in uh, Dublin. But I'm actually going to lay the points with Nebraska. They got 22 transfers on this team. You mentioned Casey Thompson taking over. Uh, Trey Palmer from LSU, uh, a wide receiver addition. Mark Whipple, the offensive coordinator. I think they opened it up somewhat. So I'm going to go ahead and lay the points. They did play last year, and one of Nebraska's three wins was a 56-7 to shellacking over Northwestern. And I think Nebraska was – all right, here you go. Nebraska was the best three-win team in the history of college football. Hmm. You can take that, put a banner up uh, there in Lincoln. I think this is a team that's poised for a turnaround. Their win total is seven and a half, so people are predicting you know double the win total. I think it starts big, but I totally agree with you. So I had them lay in the 13, but I love the under as well. I think Pat Fitzgerald knows his way to stay competitive in this game is to try to muddy it up, muddy it up, run the football. They're going to be good defensively. I think there'll be some hiccups for Nebraska offensively. So I love the under. I'm with Brady on that one, but I'm on the opposite side laying the 13. A couple of Big Ten teams that missed out on a bowl game last season. Illinois in that same boat last season. They went 5-7 and seven under first-year head coach Brett Bielema. He's back. Illinois minus 10 at home against Wyoming. And, and their offense was... was terrible last year it's one of the reasons why obviously they've gone and got Barry Looney Jr. to come in and be their play caller try to revamp some of that they're going to hang a lot on the rushing attack between Chase Brown uh, and Josh McCray and that's where they're going to base everything off of and then from there you'll see if, if, if DeVito at quarterback and then pick up his level of play a former transfer from uh, Syracuse University to put up some points but big line 10 points first game of the season it's hard to want to take or lay those points. And even with, with the Wyoming team that's obviously lost a ton of players to the transfer portal, I don't feel comfortable doing that. So I'm going to go ahead and take the 10 points here. I'll also take the over of 44. Uh, both these teams have struggled offensively. The reality is, though, that's a really low number. I think some things could get out of hand. First game of the season, you usually see some poor tackling, some big plays that come with yards after the catch or yards after contact. So over the 44, but I'm going to take the 10 points of Wyoming here.
All right, one of these picks will get in lock unity. This one we're not. I'm actually on the under because I think Brett Bielema is going to want to establish a line of scrimmage. But I'm with you on Wyoming in the points. This is a team that 2019 uh, took on an SEC opponent. Missouri won that game. They were decimated. Isaiah Nayor gone to Texas. Validate in the backfield goes uh, leaves as well. Craig Bowl posted on you know social media, hey, we need more players. We need a quarterback. Does anybody want to transfer to us as opposed to away? But I think they'll play with a chip on their shoulder. And I don't know if Illinois is at a point yet in their program where you can trust them with a spread that big. So my favorite play in this one is Wyoming with the points. All right, both on Wyoming plus 10 at Illinois. How about the defending Mountain West champion Utah State Aggies at home giving 27 against the this is not your older brother's UConn. This is not the 2010 Fiesta Bowl team. This is still one of the worst programs in college football. I actually forgot they went to the Fiesta Bowl in 2010. It's crazy that's, to think that they did. That, that's neither here nor there. You know who didn't? Jim Mora. Jim Mora Jr. Because he's there now mm-hmm. as their head coach. And he hit the transfer portal hard. They, they brought in quarterback Taquan Roberson from Penn State, who, who didn't play much during his time there and, and really struggled when he did go into play. So we'll see what they're able to get from that. But uh, the transfer portal is going to be a big key for how the UConn can build this thing back up. I don't think there's much hope for doing that this year. I mean, you're taking on a Utah State team with Logan Bonner, who's played a ton of football. It's a sixth year in college football. You know, he played at Arkansas State, then made his way to Utah State. Now, that aerial attack is going to get after UConn. So, this is the exception to the rule of the big number week one. I'm betting on Utah State lighting it up. Uh, and I'll go over ahead and take the uh, the over, or excuse me, the under of that number six and a half because I don't know how much UConn's going to score in this game. They couldn't even stay on the field last year, Danny, uh, on third down. They were the worst team in all of college football on third downs. And that is the the highest over under of the weekend in week zero, 60 and a half, Brady, going under that. Danny, I know you don't have a play on the total, but what about for against the spread? All right, we're in lockstep here. I'm laying those 27. UConn is the worst job in America. I mean, it's a program, I don't even know if they're certain where they want to be at the FBS level. I mean, there was they shut down with COVID, one of only uh, two, pro, two or three programs that shut down completely during COVID. That was a year of development that was missed just a couple years ago. It is a culture change and a big one that Jim Mora is undertaking, try to turn this thing around. It's a tough place to recruit to. The talent was not there in the roster. I think it's going to take some time for those transfers to translate. And this is a good squad for Utah State playing at home with Blake Anderson, who I think is an underrated coach. So I'll lay those 27 all day long. They have not beaten an FBS team since pre-COVID 2019. It was UMass, barely an FBS team. All right, a game I'm going to be calling on CBS Sports Network. Can't wait for it. Week zero to kick off the season. Part of our quadruple header. Danny, part of our... Uh, weekday coverage on CBS Sports Network leading up to Saturday's game. It's Charlotte and FAU, the Owls and Willie Taggart given a touchdown at home. Well, last year in this matchup, FAU blew the doors off Charlotte. Mm. So I, I don't suspect the game's going to go that way this year. I am betting on FAU being able to cover the seven points at home. The Kosey Perry coming back, one of the more experienced quarterbacks, former University of Miami quarterback, an experienced offensive line. I think they're just going to have more playmakers. I think you've got more questions about Charlotte in particular on the defensive side of the ball. Offensively, they've got a lot of returning starters. So uh, this game is one, and I, I believe I picked the under. I don't feel great about it. Um, that's just a lot of points to me, in, at least in week one. But I think both teams are going to be able to score. Uh, it just really comes down to how some of those transfer players that Willie Taggart's got in the portal are going to show out on the defensive side of the ball. Give me the 49ers and the points, not because I'm bitter at all about Willie Taggart and where he left Florida State. Not at all. That's not it at all. Uh, Will Healy, I do think last year they started off, they beat Duke, their first Power 5 win as a program. And then things kind of came off the rails a little bit last season, but they got eight offensive starters returning. They got a pretty solid quarterback. I don't know if I trust Nikozi Perry, even with four or five offensive linemen coming back. So give me Charlotte and the points in this one. Okay, both teams finished with five. Five wins last season. They got, they got stuck on five wins. Both teams with losing skids to end the year to miss out on bowl games. All right, another Conference USA matchup out in El Paso, and this one's a pick 'em: UTEP and North Texas. Brady, I'm gonna bet on North Texas carrying some of the momentum to finish the season last year. Yeah. One five straight. I think that could be the case here, uh, where they carry it into Week One. You know, we, we don't oftentimes think about that, at least at the pro level. In college football, I feel like that's real. You know, the way you finish the season, the way you take that into spring, spring into the the following season, I do think that's the case here. Um, And look, bottom line is, uh, 
Seth Luttrell's done a fantastic job. I think he's always up for different head coaching jobs because of what he's been able to accomplish there. There will be competition at the quarterback position due to some transfers coming in there. But this might be the best defensive group, at least at the linebacker position, that North Texas had under Luttrell. And for UTEP, I mean, look, I just feel like it, it, the mismatch is probably that O-line and the rushing attack versus North Texas. But this is one and again, and a pick them. I'm giving the edge to North Texas. I think they find a way of getting a win here. I like it. You can talk to me into it. I'll take North Texas. I didn't have an official pick. I'm actually on the other side on the total, though. I'm on an under. Last year, we saw this game 20-17. to 17. I think you'll see a similar outcome. Seth Rattel's, Latrell's big dude, physical. He wants his team to be physical. And with uh, UTEP having a bunch of a depth at running back in the backfield and an offensive line that has a lot of returners, I think they're going to to try to establish the offensive line of scrimmage. So I'm going to say it's a lower scoring affair. Not far away in Las Cruces, New Mexico, New Mexico State, beginning its final season before heading into Conference USA next year. They're at home against Nevada and getting nine points. New head coach Jerry Kill taking yeah. over. You know, he really prided himself on a salt sound rushing attack. Ben but don't break defense, likes to shorten the game. That's usually typically his style. And that may be what you see play out in this particular game. I actually like the over in this game. All that being said, and I think it's in part because of really what's been left behind in Nevada. You know, this is not only one do they have experience on defense, they're going to have two quarterbacks who've got some experience, uh, either Nate Cox, who's currently there, or Shane Illingsworth, who comes from Oklahoma State. Either way, they should be able to put up some points versus New Mexico State. So I'm going to lay the nine points here with Nevada. Uh, but as far as the over-under, feel good about the over here. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and take the other side, New Mexico State. You mentioned Jerry Kill. The defense was atrocious last year for New Mexico State. They gave up 500 yards a game, 40 points per game. Maybe I'll get on you with the over, but I think Ken Wilson taking over Nevada. Everyone and their brother left. They're working on a new offense, no more air raid, a little bit more traditional. Eight starters on the defensive side of the ball, but that's too many points for me, so I'll take the home team as the dog. New Mexico State to cover is the pick from Danny. They've lost 24 straight games straight up as an underdog. That's the longest active streak in college football for New Mexico State. All right, lone SEC team in action is probably the worst SEC team, Vanderbilt, but they, they are favorites on the road at Hawaii. Vanderbilt minus seven. This is late night, 1030 Eastern Time, CBS Sports Network. I feel better about the under as far as picking the over on here in regards to looking at the spread. Uh, that seven number, kind of funky. You don't know how Vanderbilt's going to travel all the way out to Hawaii. But Hawaii's got a lot of problems of their own. Uh, obviously, Timmy Chang takes over, looking to rebuild that program back to the days when he had played there. But Chevin Cordero has transferred to San Jose State. And so he's going to have to rebuild through, you know, currently what's there. And, and I don't want to say the coverage bare, but um, they've got a lot of youth, a lot of inexperience. So the reality is this could be a low scoring game. You know, Vanderbilt's not going to let it the scoreboard. Clark Lee got this job, you know, based off his de uh, defensive acumen. I think that's what you're going to see here. The talent gap between these two schools where Vanderbilt's, Vanderbilt's able to win this one. But if I had to make a pick on the spread, I'll go ahead and take the seven points and Hawaii. Uh, just curious to see how Vandy's able to overcome what was a pretty abysmal season last year. But I do think there's a pretty solid talent gap here. All right, I might have to amend the worst job in America is UConn and make it Hawaii after the exodus of players we saw in the Todd Graham era. Five of their uh, six top receivers, all four of their top rushers gone, left the program, and there was a mutiny. Timmy Chang, no offense to him, he's you know the, the, the beloved son coming back home where he set so many records, but I don't think anybody else wanted the job. It has its challenges. I think the SEC travels with Clark Lee. Here's a bonus pick for you. Over two and a half wins for Vanderbilt on the year. Going with my guy, Barton Simmons, my former colleague on the Cover 3 podcast. You will cash that over by the end of September. Book it, plus lay the seven here with the Commodores. A lot of Vanderbilt fans here at uh, CBS Sports because of Barton Simmons. Time for your worry-free pick presented by Zevo, Brady Quinn, and Danny Cannell here. Give me, Brady, your worry-free bet this week. Uh, it's Northwestern, the 13 points. Uh, it's a big number. I think when you look at the style of play for Pat Fitzgerald and the Wildcats, uh, this is just a game that they'll try to shorten. They'll play sound defense, not going to allow a lot of big plays. A lot of things have to come together for Nebraska, even with some of the talent they've been able to get through the portal. Uh, but my worry-free pick is Pat, Pat Fitzy, the, the fighting Fitzgeralds, if you will, <laughs> back over in Ireland, his, his homeland. Yeah, right. Danny? I don't know how much of a worry-free pick it is now because we're on opposite sides, and I know I'm going to get that text from BQ. It's going to be like, hey, where are we standing right now? <laughs> I'm going to go ahead for my worry-free, lay the 13 with Nebraska. I'm a believer in Scott Frost. Last year, we saw a coach take a pay cut on the hot seat. That was Jim Harbaugh. 
I don't know if he turns it around and makes a playoff push, but I think you're going to see a lot of wins translate for Nebraska, and it starts off big in Dublin with a big win over Northwestern. And, Danny, I, I'm reading here that you also have another yeah. worry-free Bonus. bet on Florida State yeah. or against Florida State. I feel way State. better about that one. Whatever the number is, I don't care if it's 50-plus, lay it. With what happened last year against Jacksonville State, Florida State getting upset late, they will be focused. They will take care of Duquesne. Lay them and don't even worry for a second about it. It's good to see Danny, you know, puffing his chest. We're going to take down Duquesne. They're no match for us. Lay anything you want. 30, 40, 50 points. Danny says lay it if you can get that, but it's hard to do with an FCS team. A lot of books don't offer that. All right, those are your worry-free bets from Zevo, Danny Cannell, and Brady Quinn here on CBS Sports HQ as we kick off the college football season with week zero. They disagree on Northwestern and Nebraska. Brady likes the under in this one. They do like Wyoming plus 10 at Illinois. They both like Utah State minus 27 at home against UConn. Other sides on that FAU Charlotte game and uh, other sides on North Texas UTEP. Second page here. Boy, you guys didn't agree much at all, did you, Brady? No. No. I guess, uh, well, mid-season form. For Brady Quinn and Danny Cannell, our two HQ quarterback rivals, going at it, looking for separation here early on, week zero. Visit Sportsline for more picks and check out the Late Kick podcast with Josh Pate. Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Sundays, 8, live on YouTube and Facebook. Do you want a sports network that delivers everything that matters about the game? The highlights, the picks, the instant analysis, no yelling, no fake debates, no politics. Hit the subscribe button and never miss a moment.